Hello, everyone. Welcome, and thank you for tuning in with Michael Lyko. I'm Noah. I am the human component of Michael Lyko. Here we have some of our fungal components, some corset militaris. These ones are getting a little old, uh, probably too old to harvest, but we'll still hook them up to some synthesizers, and it's going to be fun. So I'm going to explain a little bit about how all this works today, and hopefully uh, this video works out all right. All right, so here we have them. You can see they've got some like white stuff starting to grow around them, which is a mycoparasite. So these guys have passed from the food zone to the friend zone, and they're just going to be hanging out in the studio for the next couple of weeks or months until they start to get mold growing on them. That is like not healthy. Is I have these are just regular like tens device ear clips, um, and those actually come with the Instro Zion, which is this module all the way over here. We'll get a closer shot of that later, and and you attach them. And then the music starts to happen. Um, so what's what's going on with this exactly? And luckily, what the intro design is based off of, because it is a commercial product, I did not invent it or design it or have anything to do with it. I just bought it and hooked it up to some mushrooms and... Uh, yeah, that's what happened. So uh, basically, it's using a 555 timer circuit as a uh, a stable multivibrator, which is just a basically an oscillator circuit, and it's using whatever you clip these guys to as the resistor. As the uh, as the resistor in that circuit, and then changes in the resistance or impedance, if it's like a loop of copper wire, will change the speed of that oscillator, which is then read by a digital chip on the intro design and converted into four different control voltages and four gates, depending on the activity levels. It's like split into four different sections, which then can be sent out to control various things in the synth. So with this particular patch, I am controlling four different voices, two coming from the DPO, one coming from the STO, one coming from rings, which are going through various processors and effects, and all that is being controlled by the mushrooms. Um, so real quick, we'll just take a listen to some various things to see if we can hear a difference. I do believe that there is a, a difference in what you're listening to. There's definitely different patterns and melodies that emerge. And then I'm gonna rip this patch apart and we'll make a simpler one and we'll talk about some of the basics of sort of modular synthesis and how we can sort of take biosonification and turn it into an art form. So yeah, I guess my basic explanation of how this works is just that it is measuring the resistance uh, using a 555 timer and it's using whatever you clip it to as a resistor in that circuit so it is changing speeds and then it is measuring that speed and converting it to control voltages um, things that can affect changes in resistance within the mushrooms are like things like nutrient transport or water transport um, there's also some evidence that there's electrical uh, communication signals with fungi those will also be picked up as changes in impedance because if there's a little electrical signal that's going to make the oscillator do a little bit of a something different this is definitely definitely an art form i'm taking the control voltages and mapping them out to lots of different parameters which lets you to get kind of a more dynamic sound so let's take a quick listen first let's just go ahead and i'm just gonna i'm gonna clip it to my fingers All right, let's listen to this uh, this cordyceps. Then I have this even older cordyceps right here. Like this one is really, really taken over by the mycoparasites at this point. Let's listen to let's listen to a cacti.
This cacti has a lot to say. So, like, the plants didn't have much going on at all uh, when they were dry. So I need to give them a little bit water. So now that we have the sensitivity turned all the way up, let's compare all of the different things because we'll be able to get something from everything, I believe. So here we have an orchid playing us a beautiful little tune. We'll take a few moments to listen to the beautiful sounds of this orchid. Let's take a listen to uh, the even older cordycep that's probably been hanging out for like a month past harvest time. Now we will take a listen to the cactus. Hopefully we get something from the cactus. Ooh, it's got some bass. I like it. that is uh, just like a week past harvest time. Still passed from food to friend zone though. comparison I'm gonna go ahead and rip this patch apart and um, we'll talk about some different components and modular synthesizers so this is gonna be you know if you're if you're a modular synth person this is gonna be just sort of some beginner basics so you can kind of just go with the idea that I'm using the module the intro Zion um, to uh, to do some bio data sonification on various things and it just measures resistance, converts it to four different CVs depending on activity level and four gates when the gates are extracted from sudden changes in the resistance. Okay, here we go. Here's how a Euro rack works. So we're gonna go ahead, we'll clip the intro Zion to this here orchid. And you can see the first channel is getting activated when that light down there, the blue light lights up. The further up the tree it goes, the more channels are being activated and the more activity there is. So if I touch it, we should see some activity. Yeah. I'll scoot the, scoot the orchid into the shot a little bit there. Okay, we can see it. It's doing some things. But oh, there's, there's no noise. Why is there no noise? Why don't we have any noise? That's because a Eurorack needs to be patched to make any noise at all. Okay, so I'm going to go over kind of some basic parts of a Eurorack really quick. We have an oscillator. We're going to look at the STO, and this is a sine wave out of the STO. We can go ahead and just listen to that directly. So that is the sine wave. We have it. Uh, we have everything tuned, I think, to around C. I have everything in tune. I don't really want to mess with the tuning right now. We're just going to leave it the way it is. Um, but you could turn this knob, and the frequency would change. But I could also take the CV, which is coming from the orchids, and put it into the volt per octave control. And now all of a sudden the, uh, the voltage is being controlled by the instro Zion. So that's 
it's not particularly super exciting by itself, but that is just listening to a direct um, output of the, uh, the first CV, at least. We can then take that second output. We're going to switch over to this shaped output. Now we could take... Now we can take the second output and we can put that into the shape control, which is going to change the uh, the harmonics that we have of the uh, the voice. You know, um, basically what we have is we have a sine wave, and as the voltage coming in here, which is being controlled by the uh, the orchid, uh, is changing how much a triangle wave is shooting up through the middle of that that sine wave. So. Um, the higher voltage that we get from the um, orchid, the more harmonic content that we are going to have in that waveform. Um, so then we could do something like, I don't know, take a sine wave from this DPO here and uh, run that into our mod the mix, which is going to allow us to control how much of that's going through. And then we could take another CV output and this time we could split it into lots of copies of itself so we can use it more than once. We can take that CV output and we can put that into the mod to mix. And that's going to control how much of that's going through. And then we can, can use that to control our original uh, voice through a process known as uh, frequency modulation. And then you can start getting totally wild sounds. And the amount of that effect is controlled again by by the orchid. Um, now, I, I've, I don't know if you've noticed yet, but we're just hearing this constant tone, and the pitch and everything is varying, but the the tone is just all all the time there. And that's where things like gates or VCAs, or in this case, we'll use a low pass gate, come into effect, and um, we can then take a a gate output again from the Scion. So. When there are sudden changes in resistance in the orchid, we'll get a gate output, and that's going to trigger maths, which is going to give us an envelope function or a little rise and fall of voltage, which we're going to use to open and close this gate so that instead of hearing the note all the time, we're just going to hear little bits of it. Okay, and then we could do something where we take the voltage that's coming from the orchid and we're using it to control how long that note is, um, which is also kind of cool. And then let's also use that same voltage to control the pitch of the oscillator that's frequency modulating our original one. So that's just kind of an idea of how you could build up a patch to, to have it so that the orchid or the mushrooms are able to control a wide variety of um, parameters. In my patches, I normally have like f kind of four voices like this going on, um, and I've sort of molted everything out, and then I'll use some um, delay and reverb and, and you know filters and all that sort of stuff to get an even sort of more complex patch going on. Let's take a quick listen to what this sounds like on, we have it on the orchid. We can listen on the mushroom.
So yeah, you know, like like if I were gonna try and make a patch specifically for for the orchid, I might do something that has a little bit longer notes to ring out, so it's not just sitting here silent like this, just kind of farting every so often. Um, where the mushrooms, you know, you, you can have some sort of shorter sounds, but a lot of the time I, I just patch it up. I don't even listen, um, and then I just plug it in and let it rip and take a video and post it on the internet. And uh, some people like it, some people don't, you know. A lot of people like to talk about it, whether they like it or they don't like it, but, you know, so it goes, and this is what I'm doing. It seems like uh, like it's going well. So thank you all for watching. Um, please like, subscribe, and um, all of that stuff. And um, hopefully this video isn't a nightmare to edit. Uh, uh, yeah. So bear with me. I'm, I... I uh, Bear with me, everyone, on this video, just because I have this ancient computer. It's like five or six years old. Uh, I used to have Premiere, but I can't run Premiere on it anymore because it's just too old. Um, so next year, I'm, I'm hoping if the YouTube channel keeps going in the way it's going, I'm going to get myself a new MacBook Pro or something and get Premiere or Final Cut so I can actually edit video. I've been doing pretty everything pretty much on my phone. I have like Mulvavi on my computer, which uh, is is pretty terrible. I mean, it's cheap. And it works on crappy computers, which is lovely. It, I mean, it works really smoothly on my computer. So uh, that is great. It works great on my computer. I'm not trying to trash the program. It's just a cheap program for editing uh, video. So I've mostly been editing on my phone. Anyway, sorry for the ramble, but I just wanted to let you know that I am hoping that my video will get better because this this is this video is it's a train wreck if we're if we're all going to be honest with ourselves it's a little bit of a train wreck but i'm trying my best and people really wanted to see it and uh so it goes also if you heard weird noise in the background that weren't from a synthesizer those were probably my children i have some of those so thank you all for watching again uh please like subscribe share tell everyone about it i appreciate all of you so much this has been a really amazing experience thanks bye